All right, question of the week in Blix review number 17. Our question is, which of the following rotator cuff muscles is not involved in rotation at the glenohumeral joint? Is it A, supraspinatus, B, infraspinatus, C, teres minor, or D, subscapularis? One more time, which of the following rotator cuff muscles is not involved in rotation at the glenohumeral joint, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, or subscapularis. So I'll give you a few moments to work on this one, and then we'll go ahead and head over to the explanation. All right, so in the community tab, I asked you, which of the following rotator cuff muscles is not involved in rotation at the glenohumeral joint? And we had a great turnout. We had 34 votes. So 24% of you said it was the supraspinatus, 6% of you said it was the infraspinatus, 32% said it was the teres minor, and then 38% said the subscapularis. And then thank you to the four people who liked this post. So a majority of you said it was the subscapularis. So let's go ahead and see if this is the correct answer. So one more time, which of the following rotator cuff muscles is not involved in rotation at the glenohumeral joint? Here are our four rotator cuff muscles. We have the posterior view of the body, and then we have the anterior view of the body. So this is the posterior scapula, and then this is the anterior scapula. And we're going to go ahead and start with the posterior view. So this muscle right here on the posterior aspect of the scapula is known as our infraspinatus. So infra meaning below spinatus meaning the spine so this is the spine of the scapula so this is below infra spinatus the spine of the scapula so make sure you understand that and so this muscle is responsible for lateral rotation and adduction at the glenohumeral joint and just by the way the glenohumeral joint is where the head of the humerus meets the glenoid cavity of the scapula so making it the glenohumeral joint now this muscle right here is a complete synergist with the infraspinatus and that muscle is known as the teres minor so the teres minor and the infraspinatus are both responsible for lateral rotation and adduction at the glenohumeral joint. So we can go ahead and get rid of those two answer choices because they both laterally rotate the glenohumeral joint, leaving us with either supraspinatus or subscapularis. Now I've noticed that sometimes students get these two confused because they both start with an S. So let me go ahead and differentiate these two and make you understand what their meaning is and where they're located. So hopefully I'll help you have a better understanding of these two different muscles. Let's go back to this picture. Again, we have the posterior view and the anterior view. We're going to start with this muscle here. Now, this muscle is known as the supraspinatus. So interestingly, remember how this one here was the infraspinatus and it was below the spine of the scapula? Well, supra is above. Spinatus is the spine of the scapula. So this one is above the spine of the scapula. So that one is not too hard to remember. This muscle here is the subscapularis. Sub meaning below, think of a submarine, below the scapula. And so this muscle right here is underneath the scapula. So this is the anterior view. So this is underneath. This one we cannot really access unless we really dig into somebody's axilla or their armpit. But nonetheless, the subscapularis is responsible for medial rotation at the glenohumeral joint. So this one is going to pull this one inward. And then supraspinatus is responsible for initiation of abduction at the glenohumeral joint. So the correct answer here is supraspinatus because it is the only muscle that does not involve rotation at the glenohumeral joint. So 24% of you got this answer correct. Now, if you were part of the individuals who did not get this answer correct, I would encourage you to check out this video where I cover the rotator cuff muscles in depth. And this video is already on my YouTube channel, so you can just click on the link above and go ahead and watch that video. I would encourage you to make sure you know this information before you go into the Inblex. It's very important because the Inblex is going to cover anywhere from 11 to 12 percent of anatomy and physiology, meaning that there's going to be anywhere from 11 to 12 questions out of 100 questions on the Inblex. So make sure you know this stuff. All right. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Y'all have a wonderful week ahead and I will see y'all in the next question of the week. Y'all take care.